Hey, what's going on, guys? Kalamazi here. This is going to be my Dragonflight Alpha Affliction Warlock Talent uh, DPS review video. I'm going to be covering multiple builds of Affliction, single target, AoE, uh, and really, hopefully, it's everything uh, in between. Also, giving my thoughts on a few things here and there because overall, I like the state of Affliction, but I think a few things could change because, like, the single target side of the tree is a little convoluted and might become a bit of a an issue in certain settings. But we'll we'll get into all that. So any questions you might have that I missed in the video, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. Uh, I'll be sure to get back to you. And also let me know down below what you guys think of the aft tree. Uh, I'm going to be releasing the videos in quick succession be between each other, like probably uh, one, two, and three. I'm not really sure of the order of them. This could be the first one or the last one. But either way, if you're looking for the other few, uh, check back on the channel. If they're not already up, they will be up pretty soon. And if you like the video, be sure to smash the like and sub button below. It helps out a ton. And that being said, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so as mentioned, in the general class tree, there's going to be like one universal section of this video used in all three. Uh, I'm not going to record the general tree three times, but there are some unique abilities in the general tree that affect different specs, like demonology, sometimes Destro, and Affliction. So I'd encourage you to watch the general tree part of every video, but if you want to skip over it, there's timestamps below. So in the general tree, number one, you start off by having Curse of Enfeeblement uh, guaranteed. I'm not really sure why it's not marked here, but that's okay. We won't put a point in that. Uh, so Curse of Weakness... I believe should be a part of Curses of Enfeeblement here. It's mentioned in Amplify Curse, but it's not currently part of our toolkit in game. I think it's a bug, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to say the Warlock General Tree feels pretty good to me. You can't get every single node of utility you have right now, but there's a lot of unique abilities, like the packs, like Soul Conduit being part of the General Tree, which is being, I think, criminally undervalued right now, uh, and Synergy being there as well. So starting off, uh, this is going to be the Wowhead Calculator. The in-game one's a little, little buggy and finicky now, so we're going to use this. Uh, number one, I went Burning Rush. Uh, Burning Rush, Fell Domination into Double Demon Skin, Double Fell Armor here. Uh, so Burning Rush, Baseline, we know what it does. You zoom. I didn't put any points in Imp Step here. It does reduce, reduce the damage of it and give you a bit more of a speed boost, but... I don't think it's as relevant as other abilities we have. Uh, double Fell Armor, when Soul Leech absorbs damage, 10% of your damage taken is absorbed and spread out until canceled, which is pretty wild. Sort of like a weird kind of stagger ability. Plus, a 3% DR and damage. Uh, Demon Skin, your Soul Leech absorption now passively recharges at a rate of 0.5 max health every one second and may now absorb up to 500% of your maximum health. Uh, there's more abilities in this tree. But even with th these two being the way they are, Warlock's pretty tanky. So, uh, spell lock here. So we have a player bound spell lock now. It's not it's not bound to our fell hunter or our uh, fell guard. The fell hunter and fell guard do indeed have spell lock and axe toss now. The fell hunter will be losing spell lock. They mentioned in a blue post. We're not sure about the fell guard yet. So gotta wait and see where that goes. But spell lock I took here. Uh, we need to take double accrued vitality because we want to get demonic circle. So this is a, a, an odd node. I don't really like it being here and connecting to demonic circle, but. It is what it is. Uh, we also need to take here either Mortal Coil or Howl of Terror. I've taken Coil because it's universal applicability, healing, and caps are good at times. 20% uh, heal on a pretty short CD. So the next row gets interesting. There's eight points to be spent in this row here. We spent, uh, this is already a talent once again baseline. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We spent ten, but that's okay. So uh, first thing here, Demonic Fortitude increases you and your pet's max health by 6%. So, uh, if you're watching the Demonology video, Demonic Consumption is still a thing. Uh, so, Demonic Fortitude, damage increase. If you're not, and this is the Destro Aft video, more health is uh, good for you. It's fine. This could be something you sort of skip if you're not playing Demo. Uh, possibly, we'll come back to that because this connects to Nightmare, which is a bit mediocre. And Shadow Fury, but it's a little eh. Uh, big here, Wrathful Minion. Filling a Soul Shard increase the damage done by your primary pet by 5% for 8 seconds. So, a bit more relevant for Demonology, but still good for all three specs here. Uh, Demonic Inspiration. Filling a Soul Shard increases the haste of your primary pet by 5 for 8 seconds. We take this as well. Uh, Demonic Embrace. Stamina increased by 10%, which we just grab right here. So, we have Amplified Curse off to the side here. If Curse of Weakness is in-game, enemies being unable to critically strike is going to be very, very good for progression on bosses. But we're not sure... If weaknesses make it in or not, so I didn't take this yet. Uh, we can come back for some utility later on if need be. That's fine. Uh, Sweet Souls is back. Your health stones heal you for an additional 10% of your max health. Any party or raid member using a health stone also heals you for that amount. So this is different from the health stone conduit we have now. The one we have now 
it has to be your health stone that's used in a raider party to heal you but this means uh any health stone that's used in the raid heals the warlock so it can be your health stone your friend's health stone there's a warlock any warlock in the raid this is a universal trait so it's pretty good could possibly be changed out later on depending if you need points or not but there's that uh we i didn't put any points in lifeblood it's okay but you want gateway here for sure uh banish i didn't put any points in you can't take greater banish to banish undead but these are a bit situational times when banish is good it's very good but let's be honest nine times out of ten you're never casting banish so if you need it come back later on and get it didn't put any points in nightmare once again it seems a bit mediocre when you're when fear is good it's very good in pvp and things but i'm not doing it pvp uh so next row here we have uh what 13 points available still uh so dark pact right here bang so off the bat burning rush with dark pact you can indeed have both that's pretty solid uh this is either a strength of will or a demonic durability i've opted for strength of will here over demonic durability it can depend on the fight if you want you are on a shorter cooldown demonic durability is fine i've gone with strength of will and you have shadow fury here i've opted not to point into shadow fury because it connects to dark fury and shadow flame which both seem very situational uh so i have gone strength of will and dark pact now the next row here we have 11 points available still okay so you have acre of devils dark pack sacks five percent of your current health for the same shield value very good frequent donor which reduces the cooldown on dark pack by 15 which has a baseline cooldown of one minute you have claw and the which is used in pvp at times in some niche settings for train life uh, dealing damage faster with id uh spoilers ahead id is indeed in the affliction tree you have dark fury shadow flame and you have grimoire synergy here so you have all utility spells and a legendary sitting in this row you take synergy it's not hard uh you take synergy you need 20 points to move on to the final uh bit here which is now unlocked if we take this point out it's unlocked here we go so we spent currently one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one points uh so now this leads into soul burn uh soul burn we have soul link which uh is also uh spec wide every spec gets soul link so you have demon skin fell armor soul link soul leech warlock is going to be an absolute absolute unit you just can't die the dark pact with you are with burning rush uh it's a it's not as mandatory as like synergy but i've been taking soul link um so there's this we have soul burn it is back it empowers certain abilities so demonic circle increases your movement speed it basically gives you demonic momentum demonic gateway can be cast instantly which can be used in certain spots drain life gives you an absorb shield health funnel reduce restores 140 percent more health and the big one at the bottom here health stone soul burn increases the healing of your health stone by 30 percent and increases your maximum health by 20 percent spoilers ahead i have the demology tree open here what scales with stamina demonic consumption uh if this is actually relevant which it could be i mean popping health stones for like popping health stones randomly uh for a 20 percent health increase can be strong if you set your tyrant up right but at the same time you might need that health stone it's worth keeping in mind uh it, it's not bad i don't think it's incredibly strong it's okay utility is not bad it's there it's off to the side but we take this because it connects to pact of the eridor and dimensional rift so we take soul burn here uh grab that pact of the eridor so there are packs on this row pact of the eridor pact of uh, anilion whatever uh, this is actually a demon apparently uh you have that and pact of the imp mother so pact of the eridor changes for each spec rapture increases damage of agony by five percent for six seconds chaos bolt increases damage of immolate by five for six seconds demonology says um hand of ghoul that increases the damage of imp stew by five percent for six seconds i'm pretty sure uh it's not here but that's fine so i've gone pact of the eridor into dimensional rift this is literally legion destro lock artifact portals every single spec has access to them there are three charges it is copy pasta from legion it's very cool currently it's only the chaos it's currently only one that has it's the green one that launches like a million bolts out but it's still very cool the thing is it'll generate shards for destro but not necessarily for af or demo i mean it doesn't work for demo and it doesn't really work to, with af currently that might change based on how things go they might just remove the soul shard clause i don't know uh we'll see so i've gone this way we actually end up having four points left here 
And this is where it gets interesting. So you can go, for example, Soul Conduit, one, two, which is very undervalued right now. Uh, having SC available is pretty wild for every spec. Soul Conduit, you can go Inquisitor's Gaze, you can grab Decimating Bolts right here, and that is going to be essentially your entire tree, um, which is solid, it's fine, it works pretty well. At the same time, if you would like to opt out of this and grab Summon Jailer, there's a way you can do it, which is sort of interesting. You can take out Demonic Fortitude, toss a point in here, and there's your entire final row. Now you can shift around Demonic Fortitude, you can take something, you, know, you can avoid taking Dark Pact. Uh, you can probably shift a point out of, let's see, what else can you take here? Uh, shift a point out of Sweet Souls, uh, technically, which might even be the play. If you're actually playing Demonology, you can just go Demonic Fortitude. I guess you have to, yeah, you, get, you have to get Dark Pact here, I suppose. But either way, you can take this point out here and swap this in and get all of your final abilities here. Now, this is not yet implemented on Alpha, but it's a damage increase. You can get all three capstones, Decimating Bolt, Portals, Summon Jailer, and there's more combinations than this in the actual tree. Now, we're missing out on Teaching the Black Harvest, which is an increase to your pet value. I think it's sort of undertuned, honestly. It can be good in certain spots. You're not getting Pact of the Imp Mother, which is a Grimoire Sacrifice thing or Primary Pet Damage Amp. And you're not getting uh, Pact of whatever this is. I, for I forgot what it does for Demonology. Um, it's fine. I think this pack's probably the best. So you can customize a lot of this and you're not getting Icar of Devils or Frequent Donor. So you can change a handful of things, but either way, Warlock has a pretty good bit of utility in this tree. If you don't want, for example, uh, if you need Banish, grab Banish. Take a point out of this. If you need Shadow Fury, grab Shadow Fury. You can change a lot of things around by removing Sweet Souls, put this here, you can do this, that. It works out pretty well. Oh, and I was sitting here thinking, man, I had one more point on Alpha. I know I did. Uh, they make you talent into this uh, when on actual wowhead, but this is a talent that's given to you off the bat on alpha currently. So theoretically at this point, I have 30 or 31 spent. You can plop that final point right into demonic fortitude. So if you you don't even have to you know, opt out of sweet souls or opt out of, uh, anything else here, you can get this entire tree, all three capstones, one, two, three pact of the Eridor. You can go pact of an anhelon or whatever, pact of the mother if you want and grab demonic fortitude. If you need banish, grab it. Swap that Demonic Fortitude. If you need Shadow Fury, you can probably just swap that out once again and go here, right at Demonic Gateway. Warlock has the vast majority of their utility in this tree being pretty easy to grab. Both Banish, Banish is pretty niche. Shadow Fury is used in more settings than Mythic Plus. You can grab it pretty easily. You might want to grab Amplify Curse as well. Uh, but overall, Lock has a lot of utility. We are nearly invincible. Dark Pact. Bigger wall CD or bigger wall cooldown, demon skin, fell armor, class wide soul link, stamina increases everywhere. The general tree, I think, looks pretty good. A couple things could be moved around, but overall, I like the general tree. So, when it comes to the affliction tree, I love the actual right side. The left side could probably use a bit of work. Now, the left side is more single target based. We'll get to that in a little bit. The right side is more of your like AOE council mythic plus kind of build. And this side of the tree is awesome. I like it a lot. So number one, uh, we have Rapture at the top. If you didn't like Rapture, I'm sorry. If you love Rapture, congratulations. I, I, it's the way the spec is. It might change, probably not. Who knows, but Rapture is at the top. It is still our main spender at this point. So obviously you're grabbing UA, number one here. Whether you're playing left side or right side, it's UA. So let's say we're going more right side for a Mythic Plus kind of build, right? See the corruption's right here. So the seeds is right here. And the cool thing, two additional seeds. So the same thing we have in retail now, three seeds total, very strong. Now, this is also important here. Xavian teachings, corruption is not instant cast uh, baseline for, for affliction. Grabbing this is very easy. It, get, it makes it instant cast and applies like the application damage that they added in at some point in Shadowlands, right? So you grab Xavian teachings and we go over here. So you have Wrath and Agony, which is very cool. Two points over here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spent currently in this actual tree. We need eight to open it up. Uh, so next we have Agonizing Corruption. Seed of Corruption's explosion increases the stat count of Agony by one on all targets hit. Now the cool thing is that we have Writhe and Agony right here. So we can tell into this, open up the next row. We can put two talents in here. And the cool thing, so the seeds make Seed of Corruption launch three seeds. So... Seed of Corruption exploding with so does indeed add six stacks. Uh, yeah, six. There we go. Two Rise and Agonies count on every single mob. It's pretty cool. Now, you might be thinking, oh, okay, well, how do I apply Agony to eight mobs at once? 
display Vial Tanked. They've reworked Vial Tanked, unleashes a Vial Explosion at the target location, dealing damage over 10 seconds with the dot. Uh, it's not 30 enemies, uh, it's 8. I don't know why it says that. Uh, it also applies Agony and Curse of Exhaustion to them all. So your Agony AV Spreader, right here. Vial Taint makes AF and this Rapture Fast Build and Plus feel so much better. Phantom Singularity is the same. Uh, they share a node here. You take Vile Titan Plus, it's not even close. So there's that. Now keep in mind, it's Agony and Curse of Exhaustion. Uh, right here is Corruption, AC or Siphon Life. We take AC and Plus. Um, the cool thing is we have AC and Siphon Life right here and Rise and Agony. So they're not all in the same row anymore. You get access to both Rise and AC, which is very, very cool. Like AF of old in a sense, right? Sort of like Legion AF in a sense. Uh, the next cool thing, it's a few, but the next cool thing, Sacrilash's Dark Strike. Corruption damage is increased by 7%. And each time it deals damage, any of your curses active on the target are extended by one second. You can back into it twice, make it 15%. Think Agony or Vile Taint applies to Agony and Curse of Exhaustion. You're playing AC. You're playing Sow the Seeds. So with this combo right here, so Vile Taint, AC, and this, whenever you put Corruption on a mob, it's essentially perma slowed. If you if your opener is seed of corruption, vile taint, you have perma slowed every mob you hit with the corruption, because you're gonna have curse of exhaustion refreshing every second with corruption taking, and that corruption is never gonna fall. The curse is technically never going to fall. Remember Legion perma slows. This is literally that. It is literally that. And you know frostmage utility is pretty good. And plus they perma slow things. That is what we have right here, 100% of the time. It's pretty solid. It's really cool. Uh, to the left here, you might also notice Soul Flame. Soul Flame is back. When you kill a target, it's Soul Burst into Flames. This is Copy Pasta from Legion, Soul Flame. Now, Soul Flame in Legion was really cool. It's awesome. Really cool ability. Uh, things blowing up, packs exploding, dude. I think it was a little overvalued from like, for like a raw damage perspective, but it's very, very cool. Awesome ability. Cool to see it back and... You know, we're grabbing it. So two points there. So currently we spent two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 points. Uh, so moving on a bit more here, we need five more to open up the bottom part of the tree. Soul Swap is right here. Soul Swap is indeed back. It applies corruption, agony, and you to your target. Now, if you tell it into Siphon Life, and unfortunately it does not add Siphon Life to it, but that's okay. Uh, it feels good. There's no way to like inhale dots. And exhale them like they were in the past. So like your agony would have to ramp up again. Um, but if you pull a mob, like a prior mob, you want to start burning it down fast in a pack, just soul swap to it. If a mob pulls them off, you know, off to the side, soul swap to it, you're going. If a boss spawns, a prior ad spawns, soul swap, you're blasting it. I grabbed it here. It might not end up being as relevant as it seems, but I grabbed it for now. And we're going to sort of see where it goes. So currently we have two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Uh, I can count, I swear. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 points here. So we need five more points to open up the final row here, which makes things a little interesting. So we have Nightfall. I'll grab this for 16. IDs over here, 17, 18. So we need two more points. Drain Soul. Easy, right there. I wish Drain Soul was a little more central this year, but it's okay. That's 19 and 20. I've taken Soul Tap. Soul Tap is utterly busted. Sacrifice 5% of your soul leech to gain, uh, to gain a soul shard. There's no cooldown on this. Probably yet. It is utterly insane. As long as you're not getting destroyed by a pack, you can just soul tap for three shards whenever you want. It, it's really wild. Currently, Drain Soul's bugged. and doesn't do anything, so I haven't played it on Alpha yet. But the fact that you can choose ID over here is pretty cool. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, we don't have Soul Rod around to like spread ID and everything else. We don't have DSS around. You actually do. Soul Rod is right here. Decaying Soul Satchel is right here too. Uh, the weird part is like, we're mostly over in this part of the tree. We can branch over here a bit, but we're sitting at 10 points left. So you can, it's definitely an option. This is where act gets a little interesting. So if moving down the tree here, our option here in the right side is Haunt which is mostly single target based. Not the best when it comes to Mythic Plus. Prior add damage, sure it's fine. This is, this is Sacrifice, by the way. Uh, Sack still sucks, it's, it's random damage. This is Shadow's Embrace, it's back, long duration. It's okay, it's fine with Drain Soul, but I mean, it's sort of single target based. Pandemic Invocation is here, mostly single target, not worried about it here. Haunt, also a single target ability. 
the ability below it sees vitality uh so haunt you know what it does sees vitality says haunt deals 10 percent additional damage which is pretty mediocre when the haunt spell ends or is dispelled the soul returns to you healing you for half the damage dealt once again pretty mediocre it, it's a two point node but you gotta do what you gotta do because the ability below it is busted haunted soul your haunt spell also increases the damage of your damage over time effects to all targets by 20 percent there's not even a range on it it literally makes your haunt apply to every mob without actually applying it this is like utterly insane for mass aoe rot builds for council fights haunted soul is really really good in my opinion so i've gone this way so far uh this is where i've been with the plus mostly i have six points left to spend here you have the option of wrath and consumption here which you know in plus good solid it's all around good trade only one stack here so we have five talent points left now at this point you have the option of trying to work your way over here you can grab harvester of souls for two points like this and go soul rot decaying soul satchel and there you go that's pretty big below this is creeping death uh which is fine but unobtainable with max level talents uh, you can also decide to go like this and go from haunt you can go into deliberate malice into calamitous crescendo our two piece and four piece from retail right now is a talent combination right here so you can do this as well if you want it's okay a bit of single target relevancy a bit of EV relevancy i think this might end up being the play at least like grabbing deliberate malice for the actual rapture damage increase and uh, the actual dot extension because Vile Tank is a 20 second cooldown. Agony lasts 18 seconds. But if you get one Rapture in, you never have to Agony again individually. So I think you might just want to go over here into like Deliberate Malice and not worry about Crescendo, which is sort of, I don't know, a little mediocre. Um, and then you have three points left here. You could theoretically just go 28, 29, 30 into Soul Rot without DSS. But DSS is pretty big, so that's sort of up to you. Uh, you can also just go over here into Entorum Plating, which says Dark Lair increases the damage uh, it's damaged by an additional three percent for each dot over time act effect active it goes from three to six and five seconds uh bonus to ten you can go dark layer into antorum plating and be good there now below it you have wilfred's uh not a big fan for af i think trying to power up dark layer in its current form is still pretty bad but there's that so the the dot build of af has a lot of potential i like it a lot it's good solid cool uh this is more of like the mythic plus council base kind of build here not too shabby things get a little different when it comes to the single target focus build let's take a look at that so if you're looking at the single target version of af uh it's a pretty much the same start off initially rapture into ua Savian teachings uh i've gone nightfall into pandemic invocation two points and two points in id here opening up this row uh you want to grab siphon life obviously drain soul two, two sex of shadows embrace uh withering bolt is around conduit wise from uh shadowlands that's made it over here and that's like your big drain soul increase all that keep in mind you also have decimating bolts over here in the class tree so this gives you a good bit of uh necro lord af kind of feel you've got decimating bolt withering bolt drain soul shadows embrace nightfall all that kind of stuff right so we currently have uh, 16 points left uh so i end up grabbing soul tap obviously harvester of souls each time corruption deals damage has a 7 and 15 percent chance to do more damage or to do shadow damage uh, to your target and heal you it's fine it's okay it connects these nodes here so you can theoretically skip it just go like this way if you don't want soul rot and decaying soul satchel which in single target can be okay it's sort of a hit or miss kind of thing but the big thing here that i want is access the haunt here as well so we have currently two four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen points spent here so we need five more we also need phantom singularity that's over here so we're gonna go 16 17 grabbing ps 18. now soul swap is interesting because it might sound like it's pretty good in single target but if you're just hitting one target i don't really want to commit one point to soul swap i can just go agony corruption ua on pull and then just never really worry about it again um the fact that it costs one shard is a bit of a hindrance at times too when like dots are falling you can use it to refresh things but at the same time you just refresh manually and be in a pretty similar spot so it's a bit awkward uh we'll leave it at that for now i'm not going to bother with it right now but it could be better later on not any real interest in, in agonizing corruption or so the seeds here uh sack still sucks you don't take that so we go i would go one point in harvester of souls two point harvester of souls this opens up the final row here 
grabbing haunt off the bat haunt is great in single target not as much interest here in seize vitality or haunted soul i am interested in dark glare but at the same time you have to go through once again soul swap to get the dark glare now we have nine points left here but the left side of the tree has a lot of single target value in it death bolt is back it is very different from how it was in bfa launches a bolt at your target accumulating half the remaining damage from your spells or dots uh, on the target and dealing it over three seconds half minute cooldown three shard cost uh, and a cast time very different from where it was in bfa but it's i would assume still going to be tuned pretty well in single target so i would opt for death bolt here and i hope you guys like malefic wrath because that is back here as well uh malefic wrath has one talent is quite literally the legendary it's here it's a good increase in single target you've got drain soul you've got malefic wrath you've got a two piece four piece if you take it you have decimating bolt you have withering bolt you have shadows embrace this is a lot of shadowlands drain soul app with drain soul empowerments and filler empowerments and things like that so we have seven points left here now this actually empowers death bolt death dealer spending a soul shard has a five percent chance two points so ten percent chance to make your next death bolt have no cost and be instant cast which is not bad because it costs three shards and has a cast time on it so i would go on death dealer here and see how it feels in single target and the final ability is pact of the nath regime uh death bolt extends your damage over time effects on its target by four seconds before applying its damage so it gives you a bit more value in the accumulation part of it and gives you more wiggle room when it comes to dots so you can grab this here and have six points left so it makes things interesting you can go over here with haunt and just you already have this here and just go bang 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 so that's one two three and grab your two piece we have currently on retail right now and the four piece gets three points you can also go over here and grab soul rot which is another dot for more withering bolt empowerment more dot damage more rapture windows uh two three in, into decaying soul satchel and creeping death if you want it for whatever reason here or you can go uh all the way over here into soul swap one two dark glare three four and tour and plating so and or you can grab this if you want but i mean it's pretty mediocre and single target so it sort of depends on what you want to do i i'd like to see how dark lair is within tour and plating it could be decent in single target and there is some relevancy to soul swap plus hey, it's cool it's iconic if it works out in the long run long run hey we'll play it if it's tuned poorly we won't play it so you have options of going here 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 and around your tree out where you can take these away and you can go you know once again soul rot decaying soul satchel um creeping death you can you can just grab soul swap here instead if you want over creeping death uh you can also once again go like this and just skip this and go deliberate malice crescendo into uh, soul rot or you can take soul rot away and come off the haunt tree and go into soul swap so a lot of it's going to depend on how good dark lair is it's bugged now on, re on alpha currently so you can't really cast it uh it has a three minute cooldown not two uh how good in torrent plating is and wilfrid's is here i'm not a big fan of wilfrid's for affliction in general because dark lair doesn't really do a whole lot yeah there's a buff to its eye beam damage here there's a buff to like you know it'll send your dots more frequently but uh history shows that wilfred's based effects are not good for affliction but with that being said you've got the skeleton of what appears to be a pretty decent single target build i will say i've played more so like this uh, i've played this build with dark lair on alpha so far i don't have all the points at 70 or 62 right now drain soul is currently bugged so you can't play that so i have to go around this um dark layers bug currently as well and something else is bugged too i forgot what but it makes playing the build oh dark layers not extending dots but it, it, it makes playing the build a bit of a headache but you can tell there's a bit of uh it, it feels like the left side that's more single target based feels like there's not a lot of synergy here you have the withering bolt you know malefic wrath decimating bolt synergy but it feels like they just took a lot of abilities from like bfa from legion like you, you have harvester of souls from legion you have this from bfa you have these affecting the bfa talent which are new you have id from bfa in shadowlands you have this from shadowlands this from bfa being pandemic invocation you've got a lot of like strong abilities that are good on their own but they have no synergy they're just like they do good things on their own but they don't mesh well right versus like demo or destro they mesh pretty well there's a lot of raw power in this tree while you're trying to play it, it there's like 18 different things going on i'm it's like comparing it to shadowlands affliction in early alpha you're playing necrolord with drain soul and if you missed like one gcd your damage was terrible if you got a mechanic on you your damage was terrible this feels worse than that 
you don't you just don't have enough time to do everything <laughs> like there's so much going on in a cool way but also a this is too excessive kind of way there are so many buttons you need to hit and key binds you need to hit and it's cool but i feel like they could change a few things here maybe like i, I would love to see the duration increase on malefic wrath like 15 seconds like it would be better it's not a legendary anymore maybe nerf the damage a little bit make it easier to maintain uh I think a good swap also would be moving like summon dark lair like move this whole tree dark lair and torium plating and wilfred to this spot right here the swap this with this so soul rot's more over here in the aoe like you know big dot aoe section with dss and creeping death and dark lair is easier to access for both specs because like if it's here you can get dark lair going going down this side pretty easily in dantorium plating and if it, you can also get it very easily going down here but trying to get dark lair if you're playing the single target build feels pretty miserable and if they're trying to beef up single target with dark lair and torrent plating but everything else is over here it's sort of convoluted i think swapping this with this would be a good idea it would make both builds feel better dss you're cleaving this side of the tree is more cleave based right there's soul flame here there's seed of corruption so the seeds right and so without dss is going to feel pretty awkward in the first place so that's one swap that could totally do I don't totally know what to do with like the single target part of it completely. I want to reflect on it a bit more and play with like post uh, bug fix aft. But this side of the tree, I think it feels very, very, very good over here for Mythic Plus. Soul Flames back. Very, very cool. This side seems strong, but convoluted. I don't like pandemic invocation and there's not a lot of synergy. It's very good with, on like a raw power level, but there's no synergy. Uh, but overall though aft feels good i like it it's a very very it's a good first iteration there's no dark soul but the returning abilities and the synergy at least in this part of the tree feels good i have high hopes for aft i probably give it like a 7 out of 10 as far as the initial first uh outline of the tree goes so yeah that about wraps it up thanks for watching guys like i said i think the aft tree is actually in a pretty good spot when it comes to mythic plus and council based settings when it comes to single target there's a lot of really cool elements there but they're just not really synergistic i feel a lot of like things that were good and stood well on their own or in combination with other things from a certain expansion like malefic wrath with withering bolt and things but death bolt and malefic wrath and other effects just don't work together as well as they maybe could or should it feels a bit anti-synergistic and a bit of a pain but uh, the good thing is that this is pretty early in alpha and uh, hopefully things will be addressed and uh, maybe like reworking dark clear and uh, maybe giving it some actual damage and uh, we'll go from there but either way like i said i give af solid seven seven and a half out of ten for the initial first outline the tree looks pretty good soul flames back soul soul swaps back uh, a lot of cool iconic abilities wrath of consumption's one point which is really cool um a lot of customization in the actual you know i guess um uh, more cleave base side of the tree so if you have any comments or questions uh, that I missed in the video or want to talk about the, the state of AF, uh, be sure to drop, to drop it down in the comment section below and I will be sure to get back to you. Let me know what you guys think of this current tree because like I said, I'm probably going to be making a feedback video uh, in the near future on certain things. And hey, there's a lot of things that we learned from the discussion down below in the last video a few uh, seasons ago that ended up actually panning out and working out pretty well. So don't be shy. If you have any questions or anything or comments, uh, be sure to drop it down below. And while you're down there, be sure to smash the like and sub buttons. It helps out a ton. But yeah, with all that being said, thanks for watching, guys. And I will catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.